Okay, so step one is complete, so we'll now start on step two. So step two is going to add the FreeRTOS operating system to our project. So this is going to help us from now move forward with each subsequent task being added to the RTOS as an individual task or thread within the uh, system. So why are we using an RTOS? So the benefits of using an RTOS, it means we can make the design more modular. So it's very good if the parameters of your project haven't been completed. It's also very easy to add and remove functionality if you decide it's no longer important. So we want to use the RTOS so that we can add more functions. So as we add the FATFS, the text on the LCD, the push buttons, we can add all these things as one-off individual sections rather than having to modify a big list of code. And, well, it's available to us. We can do it. So for this particular example, we have far more uh, flash and RAM and performance than we actually need from the device. So this particular application is not really going to push the STM32 L4 to its limits. So we're just using it so that we can show you how to develop an application using the free RTOS within the CubeMX environment. So some of the basics of an RTOS. Conventional code would be a, a linear bank of code with a switch statement doing all the various functions. Each of those tasks in the switch statement are now classed as an individual thread or task within the RTOS. So, so each of these RTOS will have their own small amounts of stack. So each thread will have its own small amount of stack available to it. And each of these will have their own routines and own while one loops inside. So some basics on the RTOS. So we have different modes. We've got thread mode and handler mode. Um, so every time each task finishes its time perimeter it's been assigned, it then moves on to the next thread. Uh, and you can set things so that they wait for other threads to be actioned as and when they're needed. So you can play around with the, uh, the functioning and signaling and messaging within the RTOS itself. So a signal is a way of sending one bit or a condition from one thread to another thread. If you want to send more information, then you can use a message. So you can send a full 32-bit value between different threads um, that are in the uh, system. Then the final way is you can use mail or a mailbox. And that means you can send like a whole block of memory between different uh, tasks or threads within the system. So there's different ways of transferring information between each of the different tasks that are running in the whole application. So quick introduction to how it sits. So FreeRTOS um, is bundled inside the CubeMX. Um, it's usually the latest version that we've ported to the STM32. And every time we update the libraries of the CubeMX, if there's a newer version of FreeRTOS, we'll add it at that point. So normally your application code will sit at the top and your main code will go through into the RTOS in one direction interrupts are managed slightly differently in the um, the RTOS API commands. So they uh, are taken care of slightly differently so that you don't lose the benefits of an interrupt-based system just because you're using the RTOS. So there's two more very useful documents uh, that we have. So there's the user manual 1722, shows you about developing applications using the CubeMX. And then there's the free RTOS uh, website as well. So there's lots of information there on the freeartos.org website. So back to our cube environment now. So we're going to add the free RTOS to our project. 
uh, and to do that we can do it from the configuration tab and enable the free RTOS. So if we go back to our cube project and I'm already in the configuration tab so I'm now just going to enable the free RTOS and you'll see it's now appeared as another middleware available to us for configuration. So we'll now go and configure the parameters of the free RTOS. So in the config parameters tab we need to set the heap size for our application to 32,768 so if I go into my cube free artos and configure parameters and if I scroll down to my total heap size I need to change it from 3000 to 32768 and then apply and then so so now we need to add uh, some tasks and queues so we need to select the tasks and queues tab first we need to modify the default task so this will then become our app task uh, it'll have a priority of normal a stack size of 4096 and the entry function will be app task body so if we go back to our tasks and queues tab in the cube we want to modify this one so you need to double click on default task so we're now going to change the name of that to app task priority is normal our stack size is 4096 and our entry point is app task body app task and capital B for body so and then we can OK that so that's our the default task amended to become our application task We now need to add a new task which will be our USB task. So again we fill in the various parameters. Stack size for this one will be 256. The priority for this one will be high and the entry function will be USB task body. So if we now go back to our cube we want to add a new task so it's called USB task with a capital T our priority is going to be high our stack size is 256 and our entry point will be USB task body with a capital T and a capital B in task and body there we go so we've now got two tasks added to our free artos settings so there we go so this is what you should now have in your free artos so we now want to generate our code again but again do not open the project until we've done the patch to add all the actual application parts of the code so I need to go into my IAR that I had originally and close it first and 
Now I want to OK that and project generate code. So there's a warning message being brought up by the cube environment uh, telling you when FreeRTOS is strongly recommended to use the HAL time base uh, other than the SysTick. Do you want to generate code? So we're going to say yes because the whole point of using the SysTick is so that it doesn't use a resource on the device itself. So the SysTick was specifically designed for running OSs. Uh, the reason why Cube is warning you that is because you have no way to change the value of SysTick. So it is a fixed uh, duration, whereas if you went to a normal time base, then you were able to control the duration that you put into the RTOS. But we're happy to use the SysTick, so we will say yes to generate code. And as we said earlier, we don't want to open yet because we need to apply our patch. So I'll say close to that. And again, we need to add some source files which contain all the various elements that we uh, are using. So the freeartos.c with all the contents in there to do the uh, control of the free RTOS. The USB control, because we've now added a USB task into the free RTOS. And because we're using the SysTick now to control the free RTOS, we are making use of the interrupt for the SysTick timer. So those are the three files that we need, now need to patch into our created project. So if we go into our project so section two the patch this is the artos section so there's the three files that we need to select and they now need to go into our audio player source file and paste those in there Copy and replace for all of them. And that is created. So we now go into our eWarm and launch our project EWW.